Have you or anyone you loved ever struggled with cancer? Today on Spotlight, I've got two guests with me who are helping people to know that they aren't alone. Stay tuned and you'll meet my chemo buddies for life. Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Allison H. Larson and I have with me Martha and Tamara and you are my chemo buddies for life. I love that. I love the term buddies. I love that you're helping people that are on a battle with cancer. So Martha, you've had your own battle. Uh, you've had your own battle. So I want to hear, first of all, what are you doing for people? And then I want to know about your personal journey. So Martha, I can't wait to get started. I, I <laughs> you just, said you were excited to be here. And I want you to know mm -hmm. that in, in just like respect of all of you, I didn't have my usual amount of coffee. This is toned down. And I have so much energy. <laughs> I couldn't sleep last night. I, I just find this whole thing of being able to get the message out and, mm -hmm. and get people out there who hopefully um, can understand that they don't have to do this alone. And that's what Tamara and I are here for. And we want to share that with, with you and with with your beautiful audience. Thank you. So Tamara, what is Chemo Buddies for Life? Well, what Chemo Buddies for Life is, is that we actually met each other in a chemo room. Okay. And it was my first chemo uh, cocktail day, and it was her second. And what happened was, it, through a series of events, we met each other. We realized we had so many things in common. And we started creating a bit of a ruckus mm -hmm. in the chemotherapy A room. ruckus. I love yeah, it. <laughs> in fact, we started getting nicknames. Okay. Um, one, Double Trouble. Okay. And then another one that we found out later, we were the party bus. Ah, double trouble in the party bus. So you guys were shaking up the chemo room. Yeah, yeah, guilty as charged. And so our doctors and our nurses started like getting us to the side, saying, getting us kind of a, did you know? Have you looked at? Are you aware of the fact that we have such a unique relationship mm. and we have each other? And it's a gift. And so as we started doing a little bit of reconnaissance work, you know, checking mm -hmm. things out, we realized that it was really true and that there are so many people feeling isolated. So we decided to come up with Chemo Buddies for Life. And it is a national, right now it's national, and it's a social media support, peer to peer kind of thing, mm -hmm. but on a major level. And we uh, have something so exciting, and that is we have a membership site that they can have either their own support or chemo buddy, but that's basically mm -hmm. anybody going through treatment right. uh, for themselves. Like a match.com comes so, to cancer. So going back to this chemo room, I can only imagine that most people aren't having a party in there. <laughs> most people probably come in. I, I've never battled cancer myself, but I can only imagine getting the news that you have cancer, having to go into get chemo and that that's probably not something that you are really happy about. Is that right? Well, I mean, I, I can't speak for Martha, but I know Martha's story, and, and she, can, she can tell you. Honestly, it did sideswipe me, the first, um, the first session. It's that fear of the unknown. You don't mm -hmm. know how bad the side effects are going to be. You don't know what to expect, um, how long the process is. And as it turned out, for me, I had an allergic reaction, so I had to stay there all day. And they slow drip me, and um, to boot, they had me on a lot of... Um, Benadryl, a lot of antihistamines, mm. so that really knocks yeah. kind of your socks off. But you know what? I've been through worse things in life. I can honestly say that. Even in the most difficult chemo sessions, Tamara and I seem to find one thing or two things or three things to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that's a secret to life, whether you're battling cancer, whether you're going through a rough patch in your relationship, um, whatever the struggle may be, there's always time for joy. And love really is the answer to just about 
any dilemma. I, I wholeheartedly agree. And I can only imagine that what was probably something you were dreading in the beginning, maybe you looked forward to coming together and having this sick, party in the chemo but, room, but it's right? It's true. It sounds sick, but that's what it turned into for us. Yeah, well, and I think those doctors and nurses probably pulled you aside because that was so unique for them to see someone finding joy, someone looking forward to coming, someone laughing together. Uh, am I right about that? Yeah. What, what, you can yeah. tell me I'm right, please. You're please. so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, <laughs> you're always right. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. Um, well, you know, like in my situation, mm -hmm. that was kind of the diff. I, I'm always the odd duck out, it seems like. And I, I was a Girl Scout because I was a Girl Scout. And I brought, I think, half my house to the chemo room. Oh my god. And I had no problem going there. Mm -hmm. I had had infusions all my life for okay. reasons. And so I knew the chemo room. And I, I figured, oh well, I'm gonna lose my hair. Oh well. You know, and so I would show up, yes I'd go to sleep, but I also had an allergic reaction and so I ended up we both were on the slow mo she had chemo. a terrible reaction, uh, if I may interject. I mean mm -hmm. it was really scary and it you know affected the throat and everything closing oh, wow. up and thank god my same daughter that had gone with me on the previous one saw kind of like what was happening and being that Tamara was kind of sleeping she didn't realize what was happening to her mm -hmm. so she was able to alert the nurses and get to Tamara and Tamara and I connected that day wow. so I'm grateful to cancer for that <laughs> and mm -hmm. grateful to the fact that we were both you know mm -hmm. not liking our drug yeah basically so well what a blessing that you were we, there let, let me just tell you this this is so weird we meet like an hour and a half away from our homes right and we realized we live within five minutes of each other. <laughs> seriously it was, it was the we have the Not same doctors that. yeah uh -huh. yeah tell her this the rest who did and, our reconstructions uh, yeah, same. Yeah, same doctor, same and then not, and then our doctor made it very clear mm -hmm. to us because we had the same oncologist, which it is a practice, and so we had the same one. And then he goes on to say, and then you have the same kind of subgroup, which is not the most mm -hmm. normal, kind yeah. of almost rare. <laughs> and then you have the same number of children, and so then, you have and then, all these similarities. And we were married on the same day, different year, what? but our anniversary. Yeah, and not to it. each other. No, I was like. No, no, no. I was like, wow, you guys are really close in there. I don't know you were that close. No, 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 no. When these girls say chemo buddy. <laughs> it's actually it a different you. program. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, but go ahead. Yeah, so I, I want to talk more about how you're recreating that for other people because obviously not everybody's uh, going to live five minutes away from each other or have got married on the same day, but you're recreating this kind of feeling. I want to I touch on that maybe after our commercial. Before we go into, into that section of it, though, mm -hmm. I want to hear more about your individual journeys uh, what what happened what type of cancer did you have uh, what happened when you were diagnosed take me through that journey and that process because I think there's a lot of people out there that are really scared and the reason why they feel so lonely is because they don't have anybody they can talk to they don't understand I mean maybe they know that people have gone through this before but they don't really know what it's going to be like so take me on your journey when did you first find out you had cancer well I had had a lump that we had been watching for over five years. And I started feeling discomfort and pain. And how old were you at this right time? Right by that area. I would say 52, 53, right, when I was diagnosed. She's the one that keeps up with me. <laughs> <laughs> She'll tell you when I had cancer. She'll tell you when my first chemo was. I just show up. Yeah. That's all I do. I just show up and hug people. That's my job. And tell jokes. <laughs> so, um, we had been keeping an eye on that, and when that started hurting, I just figured, oh, it's that marker they put in there, because from day one, they, they, when they take a biopsy, it's kind of clinical, but it's kind of cool, really. At the same time that they extract, they inject a marker in that exact spot that they biopsy so they can have a reference point. And this was in your breast. So I thought that was hurting me. It felt like the thing wanted to pop out my skin. Mm. And um, I was due, on, on my birthday, I always have my yearly um, mammogram and I was doing September and my husband just would not have me wait another three weeks he says no this is weird you gotta go and thank God because my cancer grew in two weeks time it doubled in size from wow. the first um, diagnosis to my second opinion very aggressive ductal uh, carcinoma same type as, as she had and she had hers front to back 
So I ended up stage three because mine was in the lymph nodes as well. So what, what did you feel in that moment when you went in, your husband's encouragement, and you found out it wasn't that marker, that it was, I was the shocked. C word, It cancer. was more shock than fear. It was just I didn't expect it. So I, I wouldn't say I was scared. I've been through a lot of tough, and I, as a matter of fact, we need to talk about two um, near-death experiences that I've had before this. So I was no we'll see by any stretch of the imagination but i was floored because i didn't expect it so what were your two near-death experiences before the cancer oh gosh we need to go to a big commercial <laughs> <laughs> okay. i wasn't supposed to make childbirth yeah. i was born in cuba during a hurricane a storm called ella my mom goes into labor she goes to the hospital within hours they lose power hmm. first time baby i'm not positioned well I get stuck in the birth canal and for over 26 hours they work on it and they can't get me out. They're afraid to have a c-section at this point because she's lost so much blood. They turn to my dad and say, pick one, basically, mm. wow. long story short. So of course this is a love of her life. They've only been married two years. She's yeah. 20 years old. She wants his wife. Yeah. You know, I don't, I totally never have held that against him. And they've had full disclosure when I misbehave. <laughs> 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 Which is all for but, but I tell you, God is great, and God has his own plans for us. And so I, I revere doctors' ex, uh, experiences and, and what they tell me, and I follow their instructions, but I also know ultimately there's another boss. There's mm -hmm. a chief of staff somewhere else. And um, so after that, I was fine. Obviously, the story <laughs> ends well. Um, and... Then I have my third baby. I'm feeling the easiest pregnancy of all three. I had three little girls, uh, three weeks postpartum. I go on date night. I'm able to get back into my jeans. I'm wearing these new really Now, sweet now that boots. is an accomplishment. I do have to say, after you have your baby, I, I totally you know, know how you feel. You like the first time, about. oh, I was going to give you five. <laughs> what happened there? Uh, but yeah, you can. But yeah. yeah, so I'm walking the mall, and then we're, we got something like to eat. Then we're going to go to the movies. I'm sitting there watching, never forget, romancing the stone. Uh, and what happens? I feel funny. Mm -hmm. No pain, no symptoms, no anything. It's just more like an intuition thing. It's like something's wrong. So the only thing I could figure was, you know, I'm nursing. Maybe my milk's coming in. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I can't tell because of what I'm wearing. So I think, yeah, maybe I should go to the bathroom. Long story short again. Hemorrhage in the bathroom, big time, not mm. once, passed out three times, lost wow. complete consciousness. Uh, a lady who happened to be a nurse, again, serendipity, comes in and finds me, puts her sweater over me, raises my legs, knows exactly what to do, tries to pack me to stop the hemorrhage. So, you know. This is in a public bathroom in a theater. And this what is. Are the chances. This is the golden nugget I'm taking out of your story. Cancer was really the third time that you, you looked in the face of death and you said, you know what, it's not my time. But oh, I, it's not my, my final decision. Right. Whatever and what, happens, I'm, you know. I'm and good. it's that, that word surrender comes to me. It really is, you said, it's God's will. You know, and to, to say, okay, I'm. And, and when you say it's God's will, you have to be okay with either decision. That's not but to there, say you don't fight like a, a scrapper. That's true. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, <laughs> I and, did. And I want to so hear. Tamara. Yeah. And I want to hear about your what 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 happened when you first went in. Did you feel a lump? Did you? My story is completely different. And and I don't know if you want to <laughs> start it right now because I mean the bottom line is that I I did everything wrong. Uh, I had my first mammogram almost 12 years later than I was supposed to. I'm, I'm 38 and I haven't got one yet. Should I go get one? Oh, girl, I was, oh, you're, you're, you're baby. We're taking you, girl. <laughs> you're, you're a baby. We're going to drag you out of here after well, this. Well, I want to hear, hear more about your journey and what happened in that moment when you found out that you had, had cancer coming up next. We're also going to learn more about what Chemo Buddies for Life is, how people can get involved so that instead of dreading going in for the chemo, they have a support system. They have someone with them, whether that be you or someone when you love. Uh, go ahead and take notes for this next session. Grab your pen, your piece of paper. When we come back from commercial, we're going to hear more about uh, Tamara's story and then also some great tips on Chemo Buddies for Life.
This is Allison H. Larson. Welcome back to Spotlight. If you're just joining us, I've got here with me today in studio my chemo buddies for life. Uh, you guys met literally in the chemo room and now you're trying to recreate that party that you had in the chemo room for other people and the support that they need as they go through that. And we've got Martha and Tamara. So glad to have both of you here today. Martha, we just heard your story. Cancer was really your third brush with death. You've been told three times that you might not survive. Uh, once when you were a baby, uh, once when after you had a baby yourself and then once when you were diagnosed with cancer and what I learned from you is that you found joy in just being able to surrender and say hey it's not my plan I'm gonna fight like hell and then it's up to the big guy in the sky so love that story love your journey and how you got there and Tamara I want to hear more about your journey because you said it's very different mm -hmm. than Martha's and I think this is really important and, and when we're talking about chemo buddies for life when we're talking about being able to support each other I think it's important that you find similarities but also appreciate that everybody's journey is completely different. So take us through your journey. Well, my journey is, is that actually I'm one of four generations in cancer. And, and so you would have thought that I would have been on the cancer look you know, look out. And, and really, I did not see breast so cancer coming. Why, why weren't you? Because I think a lot of people do have that experience. They've had mothers that have had cancer, grandmothers, aunts. I, I fit in that category. My grandmother had breast cancer. My aunt had breast cancer. And uh, here I am. I just told you I've never even gotten a mammogram. So, so what, I, why do you think people do that? Why did you do that? Because mine was not all one cancer. Okay. Uh, my brother uh, had it first, and it was a really bad, you know, skin cancer. He's still alive. Uh, my grandfather had colon cancer. He passed. Um, my daughter ended up having cancer before me. She was 19 really? years old. Wow. Yeah, a really rare cancer. She'd been sick for a long time. Yeah. And then, um, then myself. And then my mother ended up with multiple myeloma, which is bone marrow cancer. And so, but in my own case, I had other health issues. I was like the bubble child, bubble kid, not quite where I had. When the, you say bubble kid, you mean uh, your parents wrapped you in bubble wrap? <laughs> almost, nearly. You know, I, was, I was the odd duck kid growing wow. up. I, I had problems with my health. Mm -hmm. When I was born, my mouth was not formed correctly, so I would actually swallow with my tongue going out kind of oh, thing. Oh, yeah. I could, they, no one could understand me. So I had to wear braces and headgear and, you know, the whole, the whole thing. I was always protected also because I was allergic to the sun. So mm. I learned to be kind of a real uh, protected kid. And so when I grew up and I was feeling better, you know, I wanted to just go out there and live life the best I could. And so cancer was, was always something that was in the background, but which cancer? It's almost like spin the wheel, you know, the, the roulette wheel. And so breast cancer was really not one because no one, all the women in my family had, had gone for their checkups, never had an issue, nothing, no kind of warnings. And so I was working on other health issues mm -hmm. and I had finally gotten to a point where I was so excited. I had just uh, uh, got involved in the women's group in town and, and I was joining everything. I was a joiner, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I just didn't have the energy that I thought I should. But I thought, okay, I'll go do what the standard people do. I'll go to the doctor and he'll give me a list of things to go do. And mm -hmm. I, I went into my car and being the Girl Scout that I am, I make calls for all my appointments. The first appointment I could get into was the mammogram. Well, I was 52 years old when I had my first one. And I didn't really think anything of it, except for it was interesting. I had heard all these stories. Shortly thereafter, I get the call. Oh, we need you to come back. And I think, and it was my doctor's office. And I'm thinking, okay, um, I have an appointment in a week. I'll be there then. You know, you can give me all the results then. And they're like, no, you don't understand. We need to talk. And so I started going on the testing thing. Well, <laughs> I have an interesting family. And we start, I thought, okay, I've had a great ride. I know I wasn't doing what I should do. Mm -hmm. I need to be a big girl about it. And so we start doing things like, my husband's like, we'll put you out on Lake Skinner and we'll give you a Viking send off. <laughs> <laughs> and oh then goodness. we'll have a weenie roast. And we had a grandson at the time yeah. that was really into Mickey mm -hmm. Mouse Club. And I'm like, okay, 
hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity song, yeah. dog problem song. Oh my gosh. So, so your family is reacting to this uh, in, in their way of kind of right, being funny. Right. And I think oh. everybody's family exactly has a different way of coping. And I think that's another important part of the chemo mm -hmm. buddies for life. So exactly. what did, what was the, the thought going through your mind the moment they told you you had cancer? Um, Thing. I should have listened to everybody and had that mammogram sooner. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had that moment mm -hmm. that I thought, okay. So really blaming yourself. Yeah, my say, fault. Yeah. yeah. Big girl, deal with it. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I had my And then you brought you brought and, half your house in when you went into the yeah, chemo. Yeah, I did. And then you met. <laughs> I bought a book. I bought a book and it said, these are the things you need to do beforehand. Uh -huh. I did every one of them. These are the things you should bring to the chemo room. I brought every one of them. Was there a friend on that list? <laughs> yes, yes, but I am married to a firefighter. Mm -hmm. And he would drive me there. Then he'd go sleep in the car. Oh, yeah. So you, you, and that's how you guys connected because you wanted somebody that was there for support, and that's really why you've created Chemo Buddies for Life. One of the one of the things too that I want to um, hear about from you is some of these stories because we were talking about these before the show too. Some of the women that you've been able to help uh, by connecting with them through social media mm -hmm. or connecting them with each other for support through this chemotherapy. So I. Would love to hear you you've each had your own journeys I want to hear what some of these other women have gone well, through and who's been able to help. Allison, um, it's not necessarily that they don't have great family support both Tamara and I did mm -hmm. there's something different about being able to share scary thoughts and side effects unpleasant mm. things with someone who gets it because they're they're doing exactly the same thing mm -hmm. And I just right. want to, I so want to mention. Bonds us in a different way than our family. That's true. And I want to mention too that you both are in remission right now. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So you have fought the battle. I don't know if you ever are finished fighting the battle with cancer. No. But you found that support. And I appreciate you bringing that up because you're right. Until you go through something, you can sympathize with somebody, but you really can't empathize with them. So who are some of these women that you've been able to help? I know you were telling me a story about a woman before we got started, but I would love to hear some of the stories of the people you've been able to help with Chemo Buddies for Life. Well, we, we have a few of them that have been really near and dear to our hearts. And, and the thing about this um, is that Sometimes, you know, one thing we are dealing with people with cancer, and we and that's got. I want to mention that's got to be hard. You're going into this of, knowing uh, that you can have you life. have friends that could die. You're making a friend that might not make it. Right. We have we have a few of them now that are on that list. And it hurts. It never gets old. Um, no, it doesn't. We never take life for granted. It, right, right. And the one that I was sharing about is one that we actually called our local brick and mortar. We live in the Temecula area, and we have this amazing resource, Michelle's Place, and a unique place. And we said, you know, we have this makeup artist that wants to work with us and volunteer her time, and she'll do a tutorial. Yeah. We need someone that's open to having it done, that's bald and, and everything. And they said, well, if anybody calls, that come that's interested we'll have them call they called me and they said we have someone but she's a stage four so if she calls great so uh bottom line is she called we had an amazing time we did the she's tutorial we she uh had so she got all made up yes she got all made up and then we were able to give that picture to that that uh, nonprofit because they were doing the first walk. And, and, and how did posters, she? I, I just want to like some poster girl. So I yes. can only imagine walk. going through cancer. You probably don't feel beautiful sometimes. I mean, your body's going amazing. through things, and I'm you're so you're losing she, your hair, and right. she gets she, all made she up. Did, she did, and you I know bet what? she just lit up. Yeah, beautiful. she did, and not only that, her husband was not really big about the wig, mm -hmm. and when she got the picture done, he was like, okay, we're keeping the wig. We're good. <laughs> we're good. So when the walk was over, she wanted the poster. She took the poster, and she took Now, who home. wanted the poster? The, um, the, the cancer our girl. Our okay. girl, yes, and she, she took it home. And just recently, um, she was put in hospice, and she had the poster up on the wall, and I, w I went and visited with her a number of times, and towards the end, she couldn't talk. 
but she looked at me with a tear and the most amazing loving smile and she's pointed up to that poster like we did it and she had a really strong belief of what you know so she was good she was good but um on that you know just those are the experiences that it's we knew going in that it's it's you know it's a community that we are getting a lot of wins there's a lot of good stuff but we are still losing so many so is it worth it yes and i'll tell you why because there's this misconception that the cancer battle is either won or lost no these women they fight to the very end they're valiant they fight with dignity they don't lose their faith if anything they gain more of what's best in them mm -hmm. and it's a true win whether they win here or they're not on the planet now they're still out there winners yeah. and and that is important to take home especially for the families that get left behind mm -hmm. because this mission is about them too it's so hard they're the unsung heroes you know my husband took a lot of stuff for me when I was on steroids. It's hard yeah. when you have to be on steroids before treatments and they just make turn you into a completely different person. You get very agitated, very aggressive, um, just inconsistency for two, three days before the treatment. Your loved ones have to put up with that, you know, plus help you go to the bathroom sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the day. So I don't want to minimize chemo or any other treatment. They're all extremely hard, and some some poor people go through a lot worse than we did, as hard as it was on us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was thinking about the kids. Every time we drove home, there were two children's hospitals that are known in, in California for strictly chemo. And I kept thinking, you know, this pushes me on. I gotta get through this because those kids need somebody to be there for them. Because a lot of them, their parents have to work, they have to keep that insurance, you know, afloat so that they can get the care. So it's a catch-22. So you really are creating community for cancer survivors and their family. So for those of you who are listening, and if you are listening right now and you know somebody who's struggling with cancer, maybe you're struggling with cancer, maybe you're a family member of somebody and you want support, how can people get a hold of you? The best way to get a hold of us is through our website. It's www.chemobuddies, the number four, life.org. And that's www.chemobuddies, number four, life.org. And um, we have an uh, ability to get a hold of us, but also more importantly, you have the ability to have your own chemo or support buddy. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea of it is that we understood that there was social media and people that are out there and they want to kind of expose themselves, they're okay. But the bottom line is that the ones that are not, we, we need them to have some kind of socialization because if you're isolated, the odds are that you're not going to have as long of a life. Not only the quality of life is different, but the length of life, it's been proven. So the science is in on yeah. that now. So, so if you have a good support system, you're more likely to yes, survive. Exactly. Yes. And I think that's a great point to bring up. And I want to thank you both so much for the work you're doing. You know, I, I was uh, in the hospital room just hours before uh, a relative of mine passed away. And I'll never forget, I knew that she had fought till the end. And she had a great support system in her family. But I just keep thinking, I wish that she'd had someone to talk to and discuss those things with. So thank you for what you're doing. If there's one last piece of advice or information that you would leave with everybody that's listening right now, what would it be? Martha, let's start with you. For me, it would be second opinions, definitely. If you even suspect anything, get checked out and get a second opinion. My first opinion was wrong. I would not be here today if I had followed that route. Thank you. Tomorrow. Uh, don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. Don't We're do here. It get a buddy and and have your support people get a buddy also and so that your family has more of a chance of making it. Well thank you so much again for being here today. Chemo Buddies for Life. I really appreciate from the bottom of my heart and for all of everybody out there who's listening to you right now. I'm sure you all feel the same. I'm Allison H. Larson. You've been listening to Spotlight. Join us again next week when we'll have more guests on who have transformed their lives and are now working to transform the world. 
So, I'm That's very the good. Thing that we've got out of this. Oh, I love this. You know what?